friends, this is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead, and it's one chicken meal number four, cause you knew I was gonna make soup. So we have an onion, a jar of broth made from scraps, a jar of garden medley vegetables, the broth from our last chicken, and we've got some beets from the garden. So I'm gonna work on these beets, and I'm even gonna put some of these greens in too. And then, just to make it more palatable to Howard, I will probably make some noodles. All right, let's get on this. I'm saving these beet greens. I've, put a, I've cut them off and put them in a glass of water. I'm saving those for supper tomorrow night or even lunch tomorrow, I don't know. I'm going to put th these beets in the soup along with these greens. So don't throw out the baby with the bath water. This is solid nutrition in these leaves. Okay, first things first. I put the onion in the little crock pot and I'm gonna add our chicken broth from our last chicken. This is our fourth meal. I can't find my church key so I'm doing things the old-fashioned way. Here is a can of my... Oh, geez. I may not have room. Well, I my big crock pot broke down, so we're going to have to see, folks. So there's broth, onion, chicken broth from the last chicken, and a jar of garden medley vegetables. Oh, yeah. We're going to overflow this with the beets, I think. That's okay. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Now I'm going to leave the skins right on the beets. I'm just going to take these tops off and the, the hairy roots. Because if Howie gets a hairy root in his soup, we'll never hear the end of it. So these these will have no problem going into the compost. You can peel your beets all you want, but when they're fresh and young like this, they're like new potatoes, aren't they? You don't have to take the skins off. So let's just... Take this part off of here and then up here. Whoops. These will go in the little compost bucket. And then we're just going to chop up these beet greens. I removed um, I removed any um, leaves that looked like they weren't healthy or dead or eaten too much. And we're just going to coarsely. This is going to be kind of like a borscht, borscht, but we're not putting cabbage in. All right, so there's our beet greens going in there. And I think we're just gonna make it with the beets. Okay, we're gonna dice these up pretty fine. I could get my chopper out, but I mean, it's just a couple of beets. It's not like I'm doing a large. Now this is the, cylin the, um, the cyl cylindrical beets. Look at the nice, beautiful stripes in that. And if there is room later, I will just whip up a handful of uh, homemade noodles. And for those of you who ask if I'm going to make pickled beets this year, no, I am not. I'm not fond of pickled beets. I would rather eat a great big steamed beet with a bit of butter and salt and pepper, or even a raw beet, than I would something that, like that that's pickled. There's just, you know, it's not my, it's not my cup of tea. I hope. You know what? I just realized my mistake. I just put raw vegetables in something that we're going to be eating in less than three hours. So, now I have just realized I've left this pretty late in the day to be starting this. So I'm going to be pouring this into my Dutch oven on the stove and heating it up faster. Howard is home and out whippersnipping. And look, isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to make some noodles for that. Okay, now we're going to make some noodles. I'm going to take my cup here of flour and I'm going to crack two eggs in here and I'm going to add about, I don't know, a shot of water, maybe two ounces of water and first I think I'm going to need more flour but we'll leave the flour for the board here and uh, put some salt some salt in the noodles. Right. Got my trusty rolling pin. 
and I'm just going to beat these eggs up. And I'm going to pour it right in there. And I'm just going to start put my salt aside here. I'm just going to start mixing this up. I do it different every time, don't I? But I just didn't feel like, you know, getting out all the parts to the thing when it's just easy to make it once. If I was making a month's worth of noodles, I would get out the KitchenAid. You know what I mean? But, you now let's put some flour down here. Oh, that didn't sound good. And I'm just going to start working the dough. You don't have to knead it, but it helps because it's still sticky. And I'm just going to keep I'm gonna add a little bit and keep some flour on the side here in case I need it. We want this to be a stiff dough. It's kind of like kneading bread, but it's not to activate gluten or yeast or anything. It's to make the dough stiff enough to roll out and cut so it will hold itself together as it cooks. I may not even use all this dough. I may freeze some of it for another day because we don't need a lot of noodles. I'm just going to use the pizza cutter, cut these noodles up, and I'm going to throw them in the pot while I roll out and cut out the rest, because supper is soon. Just like that. Just like that. We'll come back and do the rest. Here is the last of our noodles. Now this is pretty much a borscht, eh guys? So if you really wanted to top this up um, and make it special, you would have some sour cream on hand to uh, go in with this soup. But we don't have any and I don't think fancy asking Howie. But he'll be in shortly to give you a thumbs up on that. Well, if he likes it. This is one chicken, fourth meal. It's hot, baby. It would have been better with sour cream, but I forgot to ask you to bring some home. No squawking yet? No. Okay, awesome. We'll let you have your soup in peace. And there's chocolate cake for dessert. Awesome. There you have it. You didn't see any chicken in it, but it was there. One chicken, meal four borscht or beet vegetable chicken soup whatever you want to call it is good and that's how you make that quarter an extra nickel take care god bless